Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a leak code problem called Adjacent Increasing Subarrays Detection Y. It sounds a bit technical, but don't worry. We're going to break it down into simple, easy to understand pieces. Let's get started. All right, let's first understand what we're being asked to do. The problem gives us a list of numbers, called nums, and a single number, k. Our job is to figure out if we can find two subarrays, right next to each other, that both have a length of k, and are both strictly increasing. If we can find such a pair, we say true. If not, we say false. So, let's boil it down. We are on a hunt for a very specific pair of subarrays. There are three rules they must follow. First, they both have to be exactly k items long. Second, the numbers inside each subarray have to be going up. And third, they must be neighbors, with no gaps between them. Let's zoom in on that strictly increasing rule. This is a key detail. It means every number in the subarray has to be larger than the one that came just before it. So a list like 259 works perfectly. But a list like 255 fails, because the two fives are equal, not strictly increasing. And of course 849 fails right away because the numbers go down. And what about adjacent? This just means they're right next to each other. If our first subarray starts at some position, let's call it a cudgeon, and it has a length of k, then it occupies the spots from a quarter spots from a plus k minus 1. The second subarray has to start at the very next spot, which is a plus k. So really we're looking for one big continuous block of numbers with a total length of 2 times k, where both the first half and the second half are strictly increasing. Let's walk through the first example to see this in action. The list is on the screen, and k is 3. We need to find two adjacent increasing subarrays of length 3. Let's start at the very beginning, at index 0. The first subarray is 2, 5, 7. Is that increasing? Yes. Now let's check its neighbor, which starts at index 3. That's 8, 9, 2. Is that increasing? No, it goes down at the end. So this pair is a bust. Okay, let's slide over one spot and start at index 1. The first subarray is 5, 7, 8. That's increasing. Its neighbor is 9, 2, 3. That's not increasing. Another failure. Let's try again, starting at index 2. The first subarray is 7, 8, 9. Perfect, that's increasing. Now for its neighbor, starting at index 5, that's 2, 3, 4. Hey, that's increasing too. We found it. We have two adjacent subarrays of length 3, and both are strictly increasing. We can stop right here and return true. Just a quick heads up. We'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. The logic is the same everywhere. So how do we turn this logic into code? The most straightforward way is to just systematically check every possible starting point. To keep our code clean, we can write a little helper function. Its only job will be to take a small piece of the array and tell us yes this is strictly increasing, or no it's not. Then, in our main code, we'll just loop through the nums array and use our helper to check the pairs. Here's what that helper function could look like. We can call it is strictly increasing, and it takes one subarray as input. It just loops through that small array, from the beginning to the second to last element. For each element it compares it to the one right after it. If it ever finds an element that's greater than or equal to its neighbor, it means the rule is broken, and we can immediately return false. If the loop finishes without finding any problems, it means every element was smaller than the next, so we can return true. Okay, here's the main part of our logic. First, we get the total length of our input list, let's call it n. Now we need to loop through all possible starting positions. Think about it. The latest our first subarray can start is at a position that still leaves room for the second one. The total length we need is 2 times k. So a loop for the starting index, i, only needs to go up to n minus 2 times k. Inside the loop, for each i, we slice out the first subarray and the second one right next to it. Then, we just use our helper function. If the first subarray is increasing, and the second one is also increasing, we've hit the jackpot. We can immediately return true. Putting it all together, here is the complete solution. We start with a quick edge case check. If 2 times k is bigger than the length of the array, it's impossible to find what we're looking for, so we can return false right away. Then we have our helper function, just like we discussed. And finally, the main loop that iterates through possible starting points, slices the two subarrays, and uses the helper to check them. If the loop finishes without ever finding a valid pair, we know none exist, 
so we return false at the very end. So how efficient is this approach? For time complexity, we have a main loop that runs roughly n times, where n is the number of elements in the input list. Inside that loop, we call our helper function twice. Each call to the helper function loops up to k times. So the total work is roughly n times k, which we write as big O of n times k. For space complexity, when we slice the array to create the subarrays, we are temporarily using extra memory to hold those slices. Each slice has a length of k. So the space used is proportional to k, or big O of k. Given the problem constraints where n is small, this is perfectly efficient. So to recap, what did we learn here? First, breaking down a problem into smaller pieces, like checking a single subarray for a property, makes the overall solution much easier to think about. Using the helper function for that smaller piece made our main logic very clear. And finally, don't be afraid of a simple systematic check, sometimes called brute force. When the input sizes are small, like they are in this problem, it's often a perfectly fine and easy to implement solution. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more lead code easy, medium, or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more lead code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Lead Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems. So if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this Lead Code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.